Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth lecture of the course. In the previous lecture, we had recapitulated some content from the previous course in which we took. We talked about the basic aspiration of a human being, that is continuity of happiness and prosperity. And we saw that to fulfill the basic aspiration, there are three requirements to be fulfilled. And these three requirements are right understanding in the self, relationship with human being, and physical facility with the rest of nature. We also saw that priority wise, right understanding is the first priority, relationship is the second priority, and physical facility is the third priority. When I am able to fulfill my relationship with right understanding, it ensures mutual happiness. Similarly, with right understanding, I am able to make out the need for physical facility rightly. And I am also able to recognize my relationship with the rest of nature rightly, with which I am able to fulfill my needs and feel prosperous. Uh, at the same time, I am able to enrich the rest of nature. And this is what is called as human consciousness. When one is not able to ensure all the three and is working merely for physical facilities, then one can be termed as living with animal consciousness because physical facilities can be largely adequate only for animals but never for human beings. And a transformation is required from animal consciousness to human consciousness and for that education sanskar is the right program. We had a look at two kinds of transformation, personal transformation and societal transformation. And personal transformation essentially means transforming from animal consciousness to human consciousness. At the level of self, it means to activate all the activities of the self. So presently, we are largely working in the dimension of imagination. We also need to work in the dimension of right understanding, that is realization. And we'll be talking about this activation of the block B1, the block of right understanding in detail in this course. So at the level of self, the uh, transformation essentially means this. When we talk about the societal transformation, that is the second transformation, it means fulfilling the human goal. There are four common goals while living in a society and that is right understanding in every human being, prosperity in every family, fearlessness that is trust in the society and coexistence with the nature. If we are not able to fulfill these four goals, we may tend to live with wrong assumptions in the human being. We feel deprived at the level of family and that leads to exploitation. And in the society, in place of having fearlessness, we might be living with fear and domination and we might be exploiting the rest of nature. And there could be obsession for profit, obsession for consumption, obsession for sensual pleasure when we do not have the right understanding. So here also we can see that there is a need for transformation from inhuman society to human society. So essentially education sanskar ensures personal transformation and the personal transformation ensures societal transformation. We also had a look at the process for self-exploration from a different perspective. So we looked at the four dimensions of a human being that is right understanding, thought, behavior and work. And we saw how self-exploration is required in the self in all these four dimensions. With this background, we are going to recapitulate certain more content in this lecture. So this lecture is titled as Recapitulation from UHV2, Understanding about Human Being and Existence. So we had discussed about human being and existence partly in the previous course. Now we're going in detail about the discussion for human being. And now we're going in detail to discuss human being and the existence. In this session, we'll try to recapitulate our understanding about human being and existence, particularly of those aspects which are of immediate concern in this course, that is aspects which we are going to investigate in further depth. So we had talked about human being. We had seen that human being is coexistence of self and body. We'll recapitulate that part. We had also seen how existence is coexistence, how the nature is submerged in space. And we briefly go over that content. And we see that the concluding observation of this session is that the most important part in ensuring harmony in the human being and human conduct is ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the self. So we had talked about harmony at four levels in the previous course. And we had also seen how right understanding and right feeling is important. Now with this, we can see that self is central to human existence. This is the conclusion that we want to come with in this lecture. 
we can see that human being is not only coexistence of self and body but rather self is at the core body being an instrument and this is something that we are going to discuss now so there are two entities when we go to understand the human being one is the self that we term as i and the other entity is body now how to understand the difference of the two and the coexistence of the two so we can look at the needs when you look at the need of the self we see that the need of the self is something called as happiness for example respect trust these are the feelings which give us happiness while if you look at the needs of the body it is in terms of physical facilities like food clothes shelter now you see that every need of the self is continuous try to find it out is there any need of yours the self which is temporary think over it try to make out any such need of the self which is temporary similarly you see that every need of the body is temporary again here try to make out is there any need of the body which is continuous give it some time try to make a note of all those needs of the body which appear to be continuous and all those needs of the self which appear to be temporary i'll give an example one may assume that the need of the body is air and the air is required in continuity do you think like this but you will see that we inhale the air and then we exhale the air we do not keep on inhaling the air nor do we keep on exhaling the air so air is required but temporarily you can also see that the need for air is limited in quantity so try to make out all the needs of the body and try to see whether there is any need of the body which is unlimited is that so similarly look at the need of the self is there any need of the self which can be termed as quantitative and that is limited or unlimited in quantity so a little bit of exploration will show you that every need of the self is qualitative we cannot quantify we cannot quantify trust we cannot quantify respect one cannot say that i need 2 kg of respect and 1 meter of trust nothing like that these feelings are not quantifiable these are qualitative at the same time every need of the body is quantitative and there you can quantify how much food you require in a day you can make out how much food you require in a month in a year you can make out how many clothes you require you can make out even how many houses how many vehicles you require you can make out and you will see that the need for physical facility is not only quantitative but also limited in quantity howsoever be the count of your clothes it is going to be limited whatever be the quantity of food that you try to make out it is limited the number of cars that you feel that you require is again going to be limited the number of houses that you feel that you require is again going to be limited so you can clearly see the distinction between the needs of the self and the needs of the body generally it so happens that we are not able to distinguish between the needs of the self and we try to fulfill the needs of the self through physical facilities and then the needs start appearing unlimited for example your need is the feeling of respect now if you try to derive respect out of clothes then it may appear that you need every time a new cloth on every occasion so that you can get respect from others now what is happening here you are trying to fulfill the need of the self through a physical facility which is never possible neither it is definite that it will fulfill the need nor it can be continuous maybe looking at your clothes somebody may give you respect some other may mock at you some other may ignore it so it is not definite that the need for respect will be fulfilled by clothes similarly if somebody appreciates you also one will not keep on appreciating you all the time for the clothes it will be limited in time isn't it while the need of the self is continuous so this is a common error that we can see in our living we try to mix up the needs of the self and needs of the body and then the needs of the body in terms of physical facilities start appearing unlimited does it happen with you so try to make out whether every need of the body is temporary every need of the body is quantitative and there also it's in limited quantity while every need of the self is continuous and it is qualitative in terms of feeling in terms of understanding you can further see that the needs of the self can be fulfilled only through right understanding and right feeling 
the physical facilities can never fulfill the needs of the self similarly the needs of the body cannot be fulfilled by any feeling or understanding one has to have physical facilities physiochemical things to fulfill the needs of the body there also you can see a clear difference how the two needs are going to be fulfilled is that true you can give some time to this and try to think over this and try to make it out whether the statement is true or false similarly we can go further to see the activities of the self and the body when you look at the activities of the self you can see that there are some activities going on in you all the time for example desire is there in you isn't it you are thinking isn't it you have expectation isn't it so these are the activities the activity in the self which are very much there in you and you will see that these all activities are continuous every moment you can see these activities if you look at the activities of the body like e eating walking breathing think over it can term breathing also all these activities are temporary now again when you talk about breathing you can see that we inhale and we exhale neither inhaling is continuous nor exhaling is continuous so even breathing is temporary it is made up of two activities inhaling and exhaling if you look at all the activities of the body they are all temporary they are intermittent from time to time while if you look at the activities of the self they are all continuous is there any moment when you have no desire is there any moment when you have no thought no expectation even when you are listening to this lecture desire is going on in you thought is going on in you expectation is going on in you so you can see that there is another difference between the self and the body and that is there in terms of the activities that try to see is there any activity of the body which is continuous or any activity of the self which is temporary pause a bit try to make out try to list out all the activities of the body and try to see whether any activity of the body is continuous or any activity of the self which is temporary so these are two things to be observed the next thing is very important so if you look at the response the response of the body is in terms of recognizing and fulfilling so when any physiochemical thing interacts with the body the body recognizes its relationship with the physiochemical thing and fulfills it if you have some healthy food to eat the body will consume it and become healthy if you eat something poisonous the body will again consume it and get poisoned get worsened so the body is just doing one thing that is recognizing the relationship with that particular physical facility and fulfilling it when you look at the self it's not only recognizing and fulfilling you see that behind every recognition there is assuming now what kind of food you have to eat you have some assumption about it for example if you think that you have to eat for health you recognize accordingly you choose certain things to eat which are for health if you feel that you have to take food for taste then your assumption is different and with that your selection of the food is different your recognition changes your fulfillment changes if you try to have food to gain respect from others to get attention of others again your selection will be different so what is happening here the recognizing and fulfilling is changing with the change in assumption now i'll take another example something that we had taken in the previous course also if a needle is pricked in your body and the needle is sharp it will simply go inside the body and the blood will come out isn't it happening the same way every time so the response of the body is very much definite what happens with you now if somebody comes with a needle and starts pricking in your body of course he will say no to that but if you are told that this needle is a syringe and it has some medicine which can cure your health which can cure your body then you go for that medicine 
you allow the person to inject that needle in your body now what happened here as your assumption changed your response changed the recognition changed earlier the person who was coming with the needle was somebody strange to you and you were not allowing it now the same person now you assume it to be doctor and then you allow the person now just think if somebody comes at that moment and tells you know ears that this person is a quack and many persons uh, have suffered because of his treatment you may also die if you take that injection you suddenly start saying no i will not go for that injection now what happened again your assumption changed so your response changed now again somebody may say that no no he was just making a joke of you he is a nice doctor he has cured many people you again say yes the way you assume your recognition is decided and this happens every time in fact you can see that behind every recognizing activity in you there is some assuming activity involved and the next thing here is knowing if the knowing is ensured my assuming becomes definite it becomes a my acceptance and then i recognize and fulfill accordingly so if i know what health is what nature is what food is what my body is then my acceptance about health my acceptance about my selection for food for clothes for shelter that becomes definite and thus my recognition and fulfillment also becomes definite now you can see that there is a clear difference between the needs of the body and needs of the self activities of the body activities of the self and similarly about the response so you can see that there are two distinct entities one is the material entity the body and the self is the conscious entity in the conscious entity we have conscious activities we have conscious needs we have conscious response while everything is material in the case of body and the two are coexisting there is exchange of information between me and the body and the way the exchange takes place i coexist with the body i hope that is clear any question if so then you can write it down and send to us okay so going further we can study about the activities of knowing and assuming that is accepting now when we are working only in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling we are in problem because the assumption is not based on knowing it is not based on right understanding is not based on right feeling hence there is neither definiteness nor continuity nor fulfillment when we are working like this so there is neither definiteness nor continuity nor happiness when we are working only in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling if you try to articulate all your problems in your life are merely because the no is not ensured and thus we are in problems we work with assumptions which have not been verified which have not been validated which might be borrowed from others and we have just assumed them to be true without any verification without any evaluation now the solution lies in ensuring knowing so when i am able to know the things as they are i am able to know the reality as it is then my assuming is guided by knowing when that happens my recognition and fulfillment are also definite for example one may assume that physical facility is happiness one may assume that money is everything one may assume that they struggle for survival only the fittest can survive one may assume that nobody is trustworthy and all those assumptions could be there now just try to think for a moment with these assumptions what happens in you you feel will see that you run into contradictions into conflicts you feel tensed you feel uh, anxious unhappy so you are in problem but when you are able to see the needs of the self and the needs of the body clearly you are able to understand the limitedness of the need for physical facility and you are also able to see that physical facilities can never suffice to ensure happiness in the self for that you have to have right understanding and right feeling and then you feel resolved you are able to see that money cannot be everything money is just a mode of exchange for physical facility and that can only suffice for the body not for the self similarly you can study the nature and see what nature essentially is is it mutually fulfilling or the struggle for survival in the nature so these assumptions get dispelled when we have the knowing and showing us 
so explore this and verify it for yourself is that true that all your problems are merely because the knowing is not ensured and you are working by assumptions also try to make out that to be able to get resolved you need to understand you need to ensure knowing unless the knowing is ensured you do not feel resolved you keep on flitting from one problem to another you keep on moving from one problem to another okay so explore this for yourself and verify this for yourself so what is knowing knowing is to see the reality as it is in its completeness by direct observation for example i can know myself i can know the body i can know the coexistence of self and body i can know the relationship of human and human i can know the other entities in nature i can know how the nature is submerged in space so this is knowing and it happens by direct observation when you do not mix any assumption there any preconditioned notion there you are able to directly observe the reality and this is what these all courses are for so that you are able to directly observe the reality without any preconditioning without any dependence on sensation i will see that when you are able to see this you are able to see it in completeness and it is something definite it is continuous and also universal definite means whenever you observe you find the same thing continuity means what you observe continues in you do not forget it do not seem to lose it once you understand something once you know something it continues in you you will also see that it is something universal because when you know the reality as it is and the other also knows the reality as it is you are able to know the same thing there is no variation it is something universal something true for each one of us assuming essentially means what i accept about the reality so it can be on the basis of knowing or even it can be without knowing that one has not seen the reality or not seen in its completeness and assumed something about it i gave several examples and this could be our acceptances this could be our assumption about the reality but when the knowing is ensured then the assuming is guided by knowing when i am able to know the reality as it is my every acceptance is based on that observation of reality recognizing means identifying the relationship with that reality and that reality could be human being or the rest of nature and fulfilling means you are able to go by that relationship with the reality you are able to fulfill that relationship with the human being or the rest of nature so try to take some examples try to take uh some observations from your real life and see whether you are working by knowing or just assuming the way you fulfill the relationship in the family is it based on knowing or just assuming the way you think about your career about your future is it based on knowing or just assuming try to question yourself and try to find out what is the assumption there and what is the knowing there so you'll see that when we are working by assuming recognizing and fulfilling we are in the domain of problem and then we are preconditioned we are assuming certain things without knowing so that may be borrowed notions from the society from the media from the books let me give a word of caution here that what i am saying here in this lecture if you assume it to be true without any verification that will also form a preconditioning in you so we keep on saying that do not assume what we are saying here as true or false but rather verify it so when you are working merely by assumptions which are there without knowing and you see that they keep on changing so at one point of time you feel that happiness is to move around here and there toward the world at another moment you may feel that happiness is to watch movies so you see that the assumptions keep on changing and then the conduct is indefinite because there is dependence on something outside now this is very important generally we try to ensure happiness in us through two things one by getting some sensation from the body which is outside me and the body is there in contact with physiochemical things which is again outside you and you are trying to derive happiness out of these sensations and the second possibility is that we try to get happiness by feelings from others 
so you feel that somebody would respect you somebody would pay attention to you then you will feel happy somebody would appreciate you you place you high when you feel happy and you will see that there cannot be continuity of happiness in you when you are working for something that you get from outside and then the conduct is indefinite there is dependence there in hindi it is termed as paratantrata but when you are able to know the things as they are through self verification and when you go to verify you have to refer to your natural acceptance and then also you have to validate it in your living by living accordingly then you are able to ensure the right understanding in you and then you feel resolved and then we see that your assumption about the reality since now it is based on knowing becomes definite so it becomes your acceptance about the reality on the basis of knowing and then the conduct is definite try to make it out and this is possible only through education sanskar education sanskar essentially means to ensure the resolution in you to ensure the right understanding and right feeling you learning skills is a small part of education the core part is to enable this transformation to enable this development of the self is that true for you try to make it out again try to see here what assumptions are there in you maybe you can make a list of 10 things that you think are correct and then try to verify them try to refer them to your natural acceptance one common assumption that i mentioned earlier also is that the struggle for survival in the nature and only the fittest can survive now just think the moment you start thinking like this you feel like struggling with other fellow human beings and then you lose on the part of relationship because you have to struggle with them isn't it then you have to overpower them you have to prove yourself superior to them and then you are tensed then you are unhappy and your conduct remains indefinite because sometimes you feel affectionate to the other sometimes you feel like competing with the other struggling with the other since this is not acceptable to you naturally struggling for survival so you do not live accordingly all the time you sometimes try to feel related to the other sometimes you feel struggling with the other and then your happiness keeps on coming and going from time to time and you will see that your conduct is indefinite but when you are able to see that the nature is there in harmony only that we have to understand the harmony we have to live in harmony then your acceptance about the nature about your life about your relations becomes definite and then your conduct is also definite think over it try to make it out and try to see what role can education play in this transformation now we'll study about the self the state of self living with animal consciousness that is when the self is living by preconditionings or sensations so in the self we can see that there are certain powers or forces for example i have the power to desire i have the power to think i have the power to expect and what does it mean the power to desire means that i have activity of as imaging so i image out a happy life a prosperous life a fulfilling life and then i think in those terms i try to analyze what a happy fulfilling prosperous life would mean and i compare between various options now based on this analyzing and comparing i make a selection which comes with a taste and these activities are going on in you all the time taking another example let's say you have a desire for a bungalow so you image your life when you are living in a bungalow now based on that image you try to analyze various options what kind of bungalow it has to be what would be its location how many rooms would be there how the facade would look like and then you try to compare between various options and then you make a selection at least in your imagination you make a selection whether you able to fulfill or not comes later and whatever selection you make comes with a taste let's say if you make a selection that the house has to be painted that the bungalow if you make a selection that the bungalow has to be painted in black and then you get a taste no 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 it will not look good let it get painted in white again you said no everybody's house looks the same so why not choose a different color so you'll see that even if you are selecting the color of your bungalow every time it comes with a taste the size of the bungalow the location of the bungalow it comes with a taste these activities are going on in you all the time i give just one example the basic image that we have that is the basic aspiration is about living a happy and prosperous life and 
to fulfill that basic desire we have multiple sub desires and then we have analyzing and comparing going on for all these sub desires and selecting and testing taking place accordingly so first of all you try to see whether you have these activities or not the activity of desire that is imaging the activity of thought that is analyzing and comparing the activity of expectation that is selecting and testing secondly you try to see whether these activities are going on sometime or all the time this is the second thing to observe thirdly try to observe whether your behavior and work is guided by your imagination the culmination of all these activities or not so try to look into the content of your imagination and try to see how it guides the behavior and work now you'll see that these activities of desire thought expectation or what we can see as imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing they are going on in the self and you are coexisting with the body and with the body you are exchanging information all the time and with that information you are able to behave with a human being or work with the rest of nature the body being a material entity while you are a conscious entity and there is exchange of information here if you look at this exchange of information we will see that whatever selection you make gets communicated through information to the body and then the body acts accordingly and you keep on getting information from the body in terms of sensation with which you decide what to do next so this is the next thing to observe the next thing to observe is looking at the source of your content of our imagination so whatever is there in your imagination where is it coming from so one potential source is preconditioning something that you have assumed to be true without any verification the second source is sensation the information that you get from the body and the third source is your natural acceptance so if you have any preconditioning in you going to the same example like struggle for survival your desire would be to be fittest in this struggle for survival so let me take an example to explain the three words for example if you feel that when you move in a very long shining car you will get respect in the society so this is your preconditioning about respect and you may think of getting a good car okay which can fulfill this need of yours the need for respect so this is one kind of preconditioning the second possible source for this desire for car could be your sensation for example you are sitting in your house and you see your neighbor uh, entering into his or her house in such a long shining car and then you get mesmerized by the look of the car and then you have a desire of purchasing a similar car or a better car now where is the desire coming from it is coming from sensation and the third source could be that you try to verify for yourself whether you need a car or not so if you have to go to places which are nearby you can go on a cycle you can walk on foot you can book an auto and go and so many options could be there but there may be some need where you have to use a car and then you can go for a car so the same desire for car may come from preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance isn't it similarly desire for food so if you go to have food for taste the desire is coming from sensation if you try to get food for show off so that you can tell others that i have taken this particular food it is coming from preconditioning but when you desire for food for health it is coming from natural acceptance so this is something that we have discussed in the previous course also you can make a list of all your desires and try to see the possible sources of these desires now when the one and two are not activated and you are only working the domain of this imagination right then you are living with preconditioning and sensation you are living with animal consciousness so explore and verify for yourself are you able to relate to this part of the discussion does it happen with you is it something relevant to you is it something applicable to you are you aware of your imagination what is going on in your imagination are you aware of the source of your imagination where the content is coming from is it coming from preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance try to make it out for yourself now when we are living with animal consciousness 
then this can be further elaborated like this so if you look at the complete diagram of the cell then there are some activities which can be termed as dynamic activities which are written in the left column and there are some activities which can be termed as state activities and they are written in the right column and those activities that we are discussing imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing can be seen here again so comparing and testing are state activities while imaging analyzing and selecting are dynamic activities so these are the activities in block b2 now there are some activities in block b1 which are hidden here because they are not activated because the right understanding is not ensured right feeling is not ensured and the sources of imagination are coming from preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance and we see that uh, in fact we'll discuss this in much more detail in the following lectures the comparing is unguided here because the right understanding is missing the testing is also unguided here and thus the behavior and work is indefinite and thus the happiness is not ensured now living with human consciousness that is living on the basis of knowing or right understanding can be seen like this this is something that we'll discuss in much more detail in this particular course in fact a major part of the course will be focused on understanding these activities and seeing how they ensure the definiteness of conduct of a human being so in dynamic activities you can see that there are two more words authentication and determination and in state activity there are three more words realization understanding and contemplation so the activities in the purple block are the activities of block b1 and the activities in the yellow block are the activities of block b2 and this block b2 is the block of imagination and block b1 is the block of right understanding that is knowing and when this happens then we have the right understanding about the reality in its completeness and then our activities of imagination are guided with this right understanding and then our conduct is definite our behavior work and participation in the larger order is definite so this is the state that we want to be in and for this we have to ensure the transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness now looking at the units you can see that the units are limited in size all the units are they are with a limited size for example the body has a limited size the physiochemical things around you have a limited size everything that you see in the nature has a limited size how about you the self does it have a limited size find it out while on the other hand you can see that space is unlimited it has no limit there is no boundary to it it is all pervading it is inside every unit it is on the periphery of every unit and it is even outside the unit for example if you look at your body there is space inside the body there is space on the periphery of the body and there is space outside the body isn't it even if you look at the planet earth there is space inside the planet earth there is space outside the planet earth there are so many celestial bodies there are so many solar systems and the space is there everywhere while even this planet or the sun is limited in size they may be very large in size but they are still limited so the units have quite a large variation of size if you look at the atoms and molecules they are very small in size but at the same time the planets and the celestial bodies are very large in size but they are again limited in size while the space is unlimited it is all pervading similarly you can see that every unit is an activity in itself and it is active with other units so you can see that every unit is an activity in itself and it is active with other units if you take the example of your body it is made up of so many organs the organs are made up of so many tissues tissues are made up of so many cells cells are made up of so many molecules and molecules are made up of atoms and all of these are active so the body is an activity in itself and it is active with other units so when we are inhaling and exhaling air you are active with the air you are active with other physiochemical entities the body is active so when the body is inhaling and exhaling air it is active with the air the body is also active with other units in the nature similarly if you look at other articles in your room you can see that every article in your room is an activity in itself and also active with other units 
if you look at the planet here also you can see that the planet is made up of so many units and every unit is an activity in itself the planet also is an activity in itself and this planet is there active with the sun with other celestial bodies this is something that is true for every unit in this nature when you look at space you can see that it is no activity it may it may take time for us to study space but when you see the space as it is you are able to see that this is no activity so you'll see that this existence is the unit submerged in space and this existence is there as coexistence which is ever present it was there it is there it will be there it is ever present going further you can see that the units in the nature are only of two kinds material units and consciousness units now as we discussed about the self and the body so you can see that in the material units there are only two activities recognizing and fulfilling while in the consciousness that is the self there are four activities knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling thus you can see that every unit which is material is temporary its constitution keeps on changing while if you look at the conscious unit it is continuous its constitution remains as it is while if you look at the space which is unbounded in time and space it is ever so in hindi you can see that the material units can be termed as anitya the consciousness units can be termed as nirantar and the space can be termed as nitya now if you look at the material entities they are limited in time and limited in space also so if you look at the material units you can see that they are bounded in time and bounded in space that is limited in size and temporary when you look at the conscious units you can see that they are bounded in space but not bounded in time they are continuous but they are having a limited size for example when i am recording this lecture for you i am sitting in front of the computer and i am here i am not there everywhere so my body is also here i am coexisting with the body and i am there limited and i am there bounded in space but the space is unbounded there is no foundation to space either in time or space this is something that we had discussed briefly in the previous course we'll detail upon this in this course now with this understanding you can have a complete look at the whole existence now with this understanding you can have a look at the complete existence so as we proposed earlier existence is coexistence and it is in the form of units submerged in space the units are there which make the nature and every unit is limited in size it is activity and active with other units every unit being in space is self organized energized and recognizing the relationship and fulfilling it this thing that is being self organized energized and recognizing the relationship and fulfilling is what is termed as submergence so the units are submerged in space space is unlimited and it is no activity now the units are of two kinds material units and consciousness units these material units are temporary they only have the activity of recognizing and fulfilling but when you look at the consciousness units you are able to see that they are all continuous and there is activity of knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling the material units can be classified into two orders the physical order and the bio order the smallest entity of the physical order is the atom the atoms combine to make molecules the molecules combine to make molecular structures these molecular structures could be of two kinds one is the lump and the other is fluid now lumps are something which retain the size fluid is something which flows now this fluid goes to make the cell which is the smallest unit of the bio order now these cells organize in one particular manner to make a plant cells with a different kind of organization make a animal body the cells with a different kind of organization make an animal body and the cells with a different kind of organization make a human body this animal body coexists with the self that is the conscious unit to make the human order and the human body coexists with the conscious entity to make the human order so there are four orders in so there are four orders in the nature the physical order bio order animal order and human order and this is the way the whole nature is organized now here you can see that in the self of the human order 
that is in the conscious unit of the human order this possibility for development so through self exploration we are able to ensure right understanding and right feeling in the self which ensures definiteness of human conduct now this is development this is something acyclic this is linear so if you understand something you cannot forget it it continues in you it is there with you all the time thus the development of the self is continuous it is acyclic it is linear and in the self only can the development take place but when you look at the physical order and the bio order you can see the cyclicality there so you can see that there is cyclicality in the physical order even in the bio order a seed grows into a plant a plant grows into a big tree and the tree goes back to the soil now what has happened from the same soil the plant emerged it grew it grew into a tree and then it went back to the state of soil so the cyclicality is there similarly to make a tall building from earth right and the building some day when the earthquake comes goes back to the soil again it is in a cyclic process it goes back to the soil so whatever you see in the physical order and bio order is cyclic but there is no cyclicality here with the self of the human being it is developing so in this process we'll see that you develop in the process of self exploration in the process of ensuring the knowing in you now we'll see that all that that is shaded here in yellow is already self organized only this part is remaining and it has to happen in the self by the self so the nature is already in harmony except human order all the three orders are already in harmony human order also wants to be in harmony it has natural acceptance for harmony but it is not in harmony because the knowing is not ensured because the right understanding right feeling is not ensured so in the nature only this part has to develop and this has happened in the self by the self so your development will take place through your own self exploration it is not something that can be pumped from outside so it has to happen in the self by the self so i hope you are able to see that the rest of nature is already in harmony only this part has to develop in the nature that is the self of the human being and it has to happen in the self by the self and it is completely acyclic it is not cyclic once you are able to develop yourself it continues in you so we are able to see that we have to work on the self primarily the rest of nature is already in harmony now what is happening today in place of focusing on the development of the self we are largely focused on the rest of nature and there also we are trying to develop more and more utilities more and more physical facilities without ever being able to know how much we require in what way to produce in what way to sustain the production and that's that's how there is resource depletion in the nature there is pollution in the nature and the nature is getting devastated day by day now what i was saying earlier that is the development of the self essentially means ensuring the activation of the activities in block b1 so this part has to develop essentially in the whole nature we have to work primarily on this part this part is already there only that has to be guided by right understanding but this right understanding and right feeling has to happen here so in the entire nature what we have to work for is essentially this to ensure the right understanding and right feeling in the self and the completeness of right understanding in the self is what is termed as realization so when i am able to see the whole existence as coexistence it is termed as realization and with that we are able to develop as a human being and this development is acyclic so when i am able to develop the self then i am able to participate in undivided society and universal human order so this is the complete picture of the universal order that we want to be in and for that primarily we have to work on the self because it is here only where the development has to take place so the human conduct based on realization of coexistence and its expression would look like this so the self is developed where all the activities of the self have developed at the activities in block b1 as well as block b2 i will not explain all those terms written on the right hand side as we go along these terms will be more clear we are just trying to recapitulate something that we have discussed earlier and we had discussed this part in very little detail so i'll not elaborate much here but as you go along in module 2 we'll be discussing about the self in much more detail
so with this development of the self we can see that on one hand we have the realization within and on the other hand the expression outside goes up to universal human order so the more we work to develop the self we are able to participate in the universal human order for example the more you are able to work on your feelings when you are able to ensure that the right feeling is there in you your behavior becomes human and as your behavior becomes human you are able to participate in the undivided human society similarly the more you are able to recognize the need for physical facility rightly and the right way to produce the more you are able to understand the harmony with the rest of nature your conduct with the rest of nature becomes fulfilling and you are able to ensure mutual prosperity and similarly when you are able to participate in the larger order in the dimensions of society so you are able to fulfill human goal so the more you work for realization within you are able to express it outside in terms of universal human order and generation by generation it takes the shape of human tradition we'll talk about all these words what human tradition means what realization means we'll detail upon this so this is something that comes as a very natural outcome so the concluding observation from this lecture is that we recalled about the basic understanding of human being and existence and i hope you could conclude that the most important part in ensuring harmony in human being and human conduct is to ensure the right understanding and the right feeling right thought in the self and thus you can see that self is central to human existence ultimately it is the self where the development has to take place it is the self in the nature where there is problem because there is lack of right understanding and this right understanding has to be ensured in the self by the self and your living as a human being is governed by your state by the state of the self the state of the self determines your living your conduct so this is what we are going to elaborate in the next lecture so the concluding observation of this session is that we could recall the basic understanding about human being and the existence and i hope we could conclude that the most important part in ensuring the harmony in the human being and human conduct is to ensure the right understanding right feeling and right thought in the self and you could see that it is only the self where the development has to take place rest everything already is there in harmony in the entire nature and the self is central to human existence to live with happiness and prosperity as a human being we ultimately have to work on the self and the development has to take in the self itself and that is we have to work in the block of right understanding and right feeling so this will be the running theme and thread for the whole course we are going to talk about the development of the self time and again we are going to refer to that particular diagram of the self where we had a look at all the activities of the self time and again and we'll try to understand each and every word and its implication in living so for self reflection you can take this assignment so having assumed or understood about nature or existence in detail have you changed your living pattern your choices for example choice of food your daily routine and if yes then try to make out in what way have they transformed similarly the second question would be to what extent are you able to see the difference between the self and the body and that is where you have to make out the difference that you can see in terms of the needs the activities and the response the third question in the assignment is that are you able to see that self is central to human existence and body is used just as an instrument so you can give some details here so this is for you to self explore self reflect the more you are able to do this homework meaningfully it, it will give you further insight into the details so in this lecture we recapitulated certain content that we had discussed in the previous course we talked about the harmony in the human being we talked about the existence and we saw in what way the self has to develop how the self is central to human existence and how the entire nature is already in harmony being submerged in space only that the self which is a part of the nature has to develop and this is to be done in the self by the self so this is the conclusion that we can draw from the lecture today thank you all